I know a lot of people, you know, have seen their own experiences and a lot of communities, their own experiences really reflected in her art that, you know, we claim her. I was one of the probably like millions of people in the world that like got pretty obsessed with her at some point in my life. It was uh, in college many, many years ago that I discovered the first painting that I saw of hers, which is her standing in the middle of the United States and Mexico. Mm. And I just saw, I was a new immigrant in the States. So I saw kind of like my own experience at that time reflected in that painting. And I was just like, who is this woman? What are her paintings? I started reading, I bought her diary. I started reading a lot about her. But I also discovered that as I'm sure as a woman, a lot of my experiences um, were, you know, she continuously like capture a lot of the emotional experiences that I was going through. So, so I felt that I kept getting closer and closer to her art. So yeah, that, that's my personal relationship, but I know a lot of people, you know, have seen their own experiences and a lot of communities, their own experiences really reflected in her art and, you know, we claim her. So what was the process of getting access to all of this um, once you decided that you wanted to do this? Like, how did you go about like going through all of the, the archives and, and mm -hmm. her writings? It took a lot of research and it was a lot of, uh, you know, very involved, like diving into the archival material. Um, my production team incredibly, you know, led by the incredible Katia Maguire, like really just kind of jump into it. Um, the writings, Frida's writings are really kind of like all over the place. There's not one central book that has published all her writings together, um, but my team kind of like follow the academic work that had been done about Frida. You know, we had, we looked at every footnote and then we started collecting the original letters and the original essays and, you know, from, from, the, from the newspaper. So that was, you know, part of the work of like just getting, gathering all of her writings and having all of her writings to be able to read. And then in terms of, you know, access to the rights of Frida, um, Frida and Diego, you know, in our film, we talk about what, you know, they were very, you know, passionate communists and they both believe that art belonged to the people. Mm -hmm. So Diego Rivera left, you know, to the people of Mexico, he left all of the art and the writings of both his own art and Frida's art. So it really belongs to, to Mexico. So we, you know, we went to the government of Mexico to, to get the, the rights to be able to show her writing and her art. I'm curious if you did anything outside of the strict work that related directly to the making of the documentary. Did you do anything kind of like on a personal level to get to know her or to connect to the material that maybe we didn't see come out in the film, but that like informed it? Like, did you go you know, down to Casa Azul and, and go around or any of that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, we visited Mexico to be able to have, you know, kind of like direct contact to the art. For example, the two Fridas I hadn't seen in person, which is like her largest piece of, you know, piece of art. So, so it was really important for us to like have that experience. And we also reached out to um, two people in, in both Diego's and, and Frida's families um, to be able to kind of like talk to them. Um, we got to sit down with Cristina, um, Cristina Kahlo, who is a great niece of Frida. They look very similar, so it was kind of like a really nice experience. And she had actually um, asked the hospital where Frida had a lot of surgeries for, because she was a family member, she was able to ask the hospital for the records. Oh, wow. So, you know, so we talked a, a lot um, with her about kind of like, you know, there is there is the academic work, but there's also like the family stories and the family understanding of like somebody that is part of that of that family. Um, same with the grandson of Diego Rivera. So we got to we got to meet him too, and and the grandson Diego Lopez Rivera actually has like Diego's eyes, which are like really big. So it was it was an experience to be able to sit with them and like see you know descendants and. Um, you know, talk to us about about these these figures in their families. And so, yeah. before we before we run out of time, I'm I'm curious, what surprised you 
the most, either that in learning about her or about the way her work connects with people or anything like that? What was what was surprising to you? Um, about her, it actually surprised us that she could carry so much of this story. We thought at the beginning that maybe we were gonna need to lean into other voices of people that knew her and that were there during her life. But um, but it was just like a wonderful discovery where like she she herself kind of guided guided us through through her life in a very emotional way. So so to to know that she was gonna be able to be so present in our film was like a great surprise. And also her sense of humor. Mm -hmm. She was I knew she, you know, she had like Obviously, I knew she had a strong personality and she had a lot of humor, but I love like just reading the letters and hear her sarcasm and like her sharpness. She had a sharp tongue and that was just fabulous to, to learn.